Okay, so we're unboxing a clear path servo. This is a CPC 3421, I think that was the number, right? Yes. And then the S after that, here with Ansari, who is actually the proud owner. And we're going to go through the little setup thing here. Let me just change this so you can see, hopefully, the computer screen a little bit better. You probably won't be able to actually see what's going on there, but it isn't all that important. So basically, we just plugged everything in. Um, there's this very nice power supply, custom-made cables that you can't possibly plug into the wrong place. Um, this is a just a, a cable that plugs into the control port, and we don't have anything controlling it yet. This would typically go to you know whatever is your motion control system, uh, an Arduino or or you know a Raspi or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, a PC, anything that's generating the step and direction signals. And then there is a USB connection in the back to a port. We have it clamped to the table, so it isn't going to get away from us. And hopefully you'll be able to see me clicking and then the shaft turning and things like that. So then we, uh, we just run this ClearPath MSP um, configuration program. And it comes up and says, it's a little bit confusing dialogue. It says, ClearPath motors can be tuned to work well with a large variety of different mechanical systems. I would guess the truth of the matter is that any servo system must be tuned to work with different mechanical systems. Um, and it says that the motor that it's connected to uh, is currently tuned for this mechanical system. And then it shows a blank box here and says, is this the current mechanical system the same as the one described above? And of course, our answer to that is no, because this has never been tuned before. It's kind of an interesting way of doing that. And then they say, uh, do you want to run the auto-tuning wizard or do you want to load an existing configuration file? So since we've never done anything, we're going to say auto-tune. And then we get this big warning. This is a you know serious motor. It can cause personal injury or death. We understand the important safety limit. Uh, and then it's asking us if we want to limit the peak torque of the motor. Like, kind of, are you sure that you want to run this at 100%? I love how they're they're really doing a kind of a thing here of this is a really strong motor. Are you sure? Okay. So we'll I say yes. 25. Oh, did you suggest twenty five? Well, I said we'll try hundred. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's go for a hundred. What the heck? Um, okay, so then it's asking is is it hooked up to something that has limited rotation or unlimited rotation? This makes a lot of sense because you could have a system where it's hooked up to some machine that isn't designed to spin, you know, like all the way around. So in this case, since it's not connected to anything, we'll just say unlimited rotation, and the shaft rotates freely in both directions. Um, if you if you tell it that it's limited rotation, then it's going to ask you like, what's the range? How far can I go each way? And that kind of stuff. So here's our little summary: the peak torque is 100%. Rotation distance is not limited. Rotation direction is not limited. Auto tune range is unlimited. We hit next, and I love this one. This is, is, this is warning you what you're about to hear or what's about to happen. So there's this whole thing about how the following are normal. Squeals, grunts, fast, abrupt movements that ring, slow, uneven-looking moves, buzzing, pauses of up to 20 seconds, short moves and long moves up to 90% of the auto-tune area you have set. So basically it's saying, uh, you know, it's about to go crazy, right? Um, and it also says, you know, this is a comprehensive process and it takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and if it has mechanical resonances, then working those out may take up to 30 minutes. You can stop at any time by pressing the escape key. Okay, then we get run pause. So if we hit run, it should start going. Run. Auto tuning process is at zero and nothing's happening. Oh, is it turning? It is turning. Oh, yeah. good. I just didn't even see that. Okay, so can you see that? Yeah, you can see the motor shaft on camera. So you can see it start like randomly twitching back and forth there. I'm going to go ahead and drop the camera angle just a little bit so you can see. 
slightly more of what's going on. And the next 10 to 15 minutes of this video will be, no, we'll pause it and we'll fast forward and, and come back. Yeah. So, and I don't know if you can see on the screen here, um, my camera isn't doing a great job of picking up the screen, but basically the auto tuning progress is progressing. There is a little thing there that says that it's now at uh, 3%. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then we'll start up again in a bit. All well, we well we're, do, yeah, all we have to do is rent the place, put everything, huh? Oh, we're, we're very disappointed um, because it didn't do anything crazy. There were no grunts or squeals. I guess that's because we didn't have it hooked up to any kind of a mechanical system. So it's, it's finished 100%, very calm, uh, no problems there. So I guess we'll hit next. Um, okay, so it says we have to disable the servo prior to finishing the auto tuning. If you want to move the motor, motor to a different spot before disabling, then you can do that. Okay, so supposedly I can now jog the motor. Oh, look at that, I'm jogging the motor. And I can, I can go back the other way. And I can go more, and I can go less, and I can change the speed. Ooh, look at this. What if I go from 10 to 100? So then we understand there is here a controller Very inside. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a complete... So this has a motor driver. It has the motor. It has the encoder. And it has the servo controller all built into this one little box, little box right here, which is not even slightly warm which is cool okay so now we're going to disable the motor now so so just to be clear this motor is the shaft is locked and actually this is really cool because i want to show you just just with my finger pressure i'm not putting very much strength into it at all hopefully you can see that i am in fact changing the position of the motor shaft ever so slightly do you see that yeah okay so it's not there is no servo system that is, there's no stepper system that is a hundred percent like dead on accurate, right? So they talk about like, you know, your positioning accuracy is to within, you know, a billionth of an inch or, or you, you've got 256 over stepping. So there's, you know, so many thousands of steps. Well, you're not going to get that kind of accuracy. You just aren't. There's always a little bit of a mechanical difference. So just if I, if I just take it and, and grab it, Hopefully I'm not scuffing up the shaft too much, but I can, I can definitely, you know, wobble it. And that's always going to be the case with any kind of a servo system, right? Because it doesn't know that it's in the wrong place. It doesn't know that it needs to drive against you until it's been driven off of its correct position by a little teeny tiny bit. So since it has been running and it's completely cold. cold. Yeah. yeah. So it's a very powerful system, obviously. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and hit disable. And now what you should see is that, yeah, the shaft is completely loose. So we hit next, fine tuning. So we can manually fine tune. Uh, you can change the motor identity settings. Okay, I don't, think, I don't know that we want to do any of that. So we just hit finish, we're done. Um, and here's all of our information from the tuning let's see what other modes are there in this software that you can't see because it's off camera so we can save the configuration so basically I'm sure that's just going to save it as a file an MTR file uh, configuration file so this is a no load Um, and then we can load that configuration file back in again. Um, obviously, we would retune it if we were hooking it up to any, you know, physical device. Uh, reset the config to factory defaults. We can export the thing. Um, cut, copy, paste, motor ID. So that's the particular. So I can put in a name if I want to, and it'll store it in the firmware, which is kind of cool. That's good. Um, Mode is step and direction. That's the only mode because it's a servo. Um, 
some so some servo systems will have not only step and direction inputs but also analog um, well no no I'm sorry that's the motor controller to the motor driver so pretty much step and direction is the way you tell something where it needs to be so for this one to control it you don't really need any fancy system just all you need is just an Arduino, Arduino? yeah wow. well anything that can be a motion controller yeah. and and uh, and on the one hand, that's that doesn't need to be terribly fancy. On the other hand, it, it gets pretty darn complicated when you take into account things like acceleration, mm -hmm. and because um, you you can't so like for example, you can't just have your Arduino just suddenly start generating steps at a certain speed. I yeah. mean, you can, but you typically don't want that. You want it to ramp up, you know, like start slowly and then ramp up to faster and faster, and then ramp down at the end. Otherwise, your the whatever piece of equipment that you're hooked up to is going to be you know jerked at the full strength of the servo, which you probably don't want to. So here's the auto tune, fine tune. We can change the units to counts or RPMs. Torque fold back, tracking error limit, high level feedback, uh, move done criteria, input A B filtering. Man, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here, and then there's an about. So that's unboxing. Um, next thing we need to do is cut up a cable and hook it up to an Arduino and make it do something useful. Thanks for watching.